just in terms of when you come to a new project, uh, could you tell us a bit about your writing process? And I know there'll be lots of writers watching. It's always great to hear how, uh, you know, do you, do you spend a lot of time on research for each project or what's your sort of process? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the individual project. So if it's something um, like something historically based or something based on real life, then um, I feel like I need to do enough research to feel confident to throw it away, if that makes sense. Like I, I think if you try to write, well, for me anyway, if I try to write without knowing something as you know as, as in depth as I possibly can, then I, I find it quite um I find I find myself stalling quite a lot because I feel like I have a lot of responsibility to those people. So with something like Murdered by My Father, I was very lucky that that came out of the factual department of the BBC and they had um, a lot of research there already and I went and did my own. And I had ideas of what I wanted that story to be and what I thought was interesting about it and what I thought was necessary to pull out of those that situation. But yeah, it took me, you know, and I was still researching or writing it in the end, but um, yeah, it took me a long time. And then something like um, my first episode, Doctor Who, was set during the partition of India, which is a big topic and you can't cover it all in like uh, 50 minutes, especially like with the sci-fi element and whatnot. But um, yeah, again, I it, I was researching that for probably a year and a half on itself. And so um, something like that is a lot heavy. If it's not if it's something where I'm just like, oh, um, that's a situation I think is really funny or really interesting, or I love that character, then I will try and follow that as my first, um, yeah, as my first call, call, I'll just try and see where that character takes me so I don't lose, because I think it's very easy to have an idea that flashes in your head and it's just sort of withers and that, you know, happens a lot. And sometimes that means the idea isn't quite ready or isn't quite right or doesn't really have the legs that you hoped it would but i'm getting better at just trying to chase that initial enthusiasm so i can um, at least anchor something and come back to it if i need to so yeah it, it flips around um, and also I, I feel like i'm a little bit loose when it's a play i feel i'm happy to chase things a little bit um my time in telly i think has taught me to be a bit harder on concept and idea at an early stage um, so I, if it's if it's something of my own doing, not a historical thing, I'll like be asking myself, what is it about this idea that compels me? And I think that's something I come back to no matter what the project is. It's just being really like you don't have to know necessarily about the wholeness of the plot or the characters or where you want it to go, but just asking yourself to be really clear about what is it that's like really pulls you into it because the process is long either way, and you need to be able to stick it out. That's fantastic. And you mentioned that um, you know. You've got on your MA, you kind of obviously met a lot of great colleagues and stuff. Do you have a community around? Obviously, you know, you work working pro professionally, but do you have a, a community of writers around you that you sort of share material with, or how do you kind of um, get feedback yeah. at an early stage? Or? Yeah, no, I don't use them as much as I used to because, because yeah, if I'm hired to write something, then usually I'll lean on the people I'm working with. Yeah. Um, but there, yeah, there are a couple of people that from that MA and just like I've met during my time in theatre who I will send relatively early drafts to because um, they're people who I trust to understand, who understand me and understand what I want to do and what I like doing, but will also not be, will not give me a pass. And what that means is they push you to make that work the thing that you say you told them in grand words and excited arm waving what you want it to be and they just sort of hold you to account account for that and i think that's a really valuable thing i think it can be quite easy to find people who will tell you how they would do something but it's very hard to find people who will push you to make it the thing that you want it to be that's really great advice i think for any writer um do you have a daily routine um obviously you're writing full time so um is is there any kind of tips you could give especially emerging screenwriters who are perhaps juggling a day job, which... Yeah. You know, any tips you could pass on about a daily routine? Yeah. Um, like, my routine has shifted over the years, just depending, like, just because my life has changed a little bit. Um, I think the important thing is that you have some degree of consistency, because I, I, I'm a big believer in the fact that um, creativity is cumulative. So it's not necessarily about going, I've cleared my whole life and I've got like, you know, this 10 hours to be a genius. I think that puts too much pressure on yourself. Um, although I've done it <laughs> deadline times, uh, I've not been a genius just like hoped that would be. Um, I think it is just that thing of going, carving out, you know, even if it's just 10, 15 minutes every day to do something. Um, for me, I, I need to be quite scheduled because um, 
yeah, my brain finds it, I find it quite hard to like settle down and focus on something and actually getting the routine of putting myself down at the desk at a certain time, you know, like, um, I used to, again, when I was like a bit younger, it was like eight in the morning, a bit of medicine first thing. And now I let myself do some other things first for other people, go for a run, make sure I don't uh, go entirely mad. Yeah, that can, I, I noticed, I, it's really clear to me that when I, and that should all sort of gets disrupted, the ideas come a little bit uh, less easily. Whereas if you just sort of keep that, um, you know, even if, again, a small block of time every day, then even it means that the stories are sitting in the back of your head and your brain is working on it whenever. So you, um, whether you're in the shower or you just go like out for your one daily allowance of exercise or, um, you know, on the phone to your friends, like that stuff keeps churning because you keep it present, you keep it at the front of your mind and your, your brain learns to sort of switch it on. Um, so yeah, like for me, routine is really important. If you were doing writing as part of, you know, having another job, that's actually for me was one of the most exciting times to write because it meant it was the, um, uh, it was sort of like the, the, the wonderful joyful thing in my life, uh, where you can escape from the world into your work and not that it isn't still like that sometimes, but, um, you know, writing is mostly showing up and uh, sitting there like, you know, in your pants and just typing away for hours and hours and hours, uh, which can become a bit of a drag. So I think don't will away those days, even though I think, you know, it's, I think there's a real understandable desire to like, I just want this to be my entire life, but actually having a life informed that writing work is the most exciting time. And you find, um, I find it, I found it actually much easier to tap into the world when I was still um, had a job alongside it so yeah don't rush to get out of it I think it will, it will help the writing um, and do you have um any favorite books on screenwriting that you you would recommend um yeah there's like a few I really like but I think the one I'd mentioned in the first instance is um there's an Alexander McKendrick book called on filmmaking which you probably know um I really like that because I started off trying to direct as well and he he was like an old Ealing comedies director and became a screenwriting tutor and he's like his style is very accessible and very fun um, and the book is sort of split into the writing part and like how you might handle the directing of it and what I really like about that is when you're, you're writing a script because um, it'll eventually you know that's the blueprint for someone else to do something with and I liked a book that connected up the process of writing with the process of directing like what might ultimately happen with it um, but it's is really clear on both and yeah I, I found it really friendly I found it really it's not full of lots of jargon it's not very intimidating it's just a really clear and um, easy guide from someone who really knows what they're doing. Great great recommendation and you mentioned directing is that something you think you'd like to do in the future is it on the cards? Yeah I, hope, I keep telling myself to get back to it <laughs> it's just like there's like always something else to be done um, but yeah for sure um, yeah, for lots of reasons. I think I, I really love working with actors in particular, and like I find that really exciting. I think the, one of the best reasons to write for theatre in particular is so you get to spend like four weeks in a rehearsal room with actors because there is genuinely nothing more exciting than you having written this long, laborious uh, passage and realizing you can just cut most of it can actors doing it with their face, like the clarity that that filter of other people sits through. Like I, I, I really love that process and. Yeah, I, I, I tell myself, I'm going to say it, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to do some more directing um, just so I hold myself to accountable. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I will send you this link so you've got it to put it in your, 